Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 241 of Prog Review. And today, ow, ow, that really did hurt that time. Um, I'm talking about um, Someday World by Eno and Hyde, or Brian Eno and Carl Hyde. Brian Eno, you know, well, you should know, he's the... Um, He's a clever fella who came from Roxy Music and has worked with many artists over the years. And Carl Hyde um, is one of the, the guys from Underworld, a dance band, probably most famous for their hit, um, Born Slippy, which was used in the movie Train Spotting all those years ago. One of my favourite films. Um, yeah, this one kind of crept on me. I wasn't expecting it. And I like I like albums that you know creep up and, and take you unawares. Um, it's an album of awful familiar, familiarity. I mean, not, not awful in a bad way. Awful as in there's a lot of it. Um, there's a lot of familiarity on here, from the opening notes of Satellites. You hear you two. Like I say you hear every riff and band that Eno's worked with. You've got Andy Mackay from Roxy Music providing saxophones on a couple of the tracks. Um, but yeah, it opens with Satellites, which is an absolutely belting track and instantly put me in mind of Nerve Net and music of, a, of the, from the 80s, you know, things that are very you know, electronic and drum machine orientated it's a delightful track um, and that, that leads into daddy's car which again which is absolutely fantastic corking track lots of things going on but this time the vocals by Carl Hyde um, and this is what you get you get you know, them both it's a two very much a two-handed thing with them both, you know, either one of them taking the vocals or sharing or doubling up um, the first two tracks are very similar to each other very similar energy like I say not going to scare the horses. It's you know it's it's very familiar stuff, but I really I really like it. It's, it's this is the thing. It's a real grower. A man wakes up. Again, it's another grower. It's um. It's almost like a gospel song, and it builds to a, a great crescendo. You know, the man wakes up and shines, and the voices swell, and it's just a really uplifting, an uplifting track. Um, again, some of the, some of, what you find it like with that with um, with a couple of songs you think I oh, you know David Byrne could have could have sung on this, uh, but yet Carl Hyde doing it doing a very good job. Uh, Witness again is the same. Uh, strip it down. Mother of a dog. Again, goes along nicely. Who rings the bell? Is a more um, plaintive, solemn song, very different, slightly different tone. Uh, and the same goes with When I Built This World. It's, you know, it's very slightly down. We go we go up and we slightly go down and then the album finishes with a track called To Us All, which takes two minutes for it to, before the vocals kick in. And it sounds very much like something from Apollo. And I, and I really expected Daniel Lenoir's lap steel guitar to kick in at some point, but you don't. Again, it's a lovely track. And, you know, I've, again, I've got to say about all the stuff, the music and the tunes on here are really good. It's a really solid album. It's one of the most solid albums that Eno's you know, been involved in. And Carl Hyde's you know, contribution is very strong indeed. Um... But again, it's not going to be for everyone. If you if you like dancey kind of music, you know things you know, a, a little bit electronic, you might not like it. If you're one of these sad sacks who spend their time listening to I don't know Transatlantic or um, I don't know Porcupine Tree, you know those those new prog bands, you you might not like this stuff. And you be you should like it. You should go out. You should give it a try. Um, I mean, I got a lot from it. It did remind me of. Um, Eno and Kale, it reminded me Nerve Net. It you know very, very reminiscent of those in a good way, in a in a new f familiarity kind of way. It's like putting on a, 
it's like going into a shop, putting on a pair of trainers, and they fit and they feel like your old trainers. It's it's like that. They're new, but they're old at the same time. Probably not the best analogy to use. But yeah, as an album, I absolutely loved every minute of it. I think it's it's my pick. It's my it's my pick of the year. It's the best album of the year so far. Um, this one, this this is the special edition. I suppose it's special edition. It's got the second CD. It's um, second CD, 15 minutes of music. Um, you know, do you need to buy the special CD? Probably only if you're a completist. Um, there's some nice things. There's some interesting things on here. Um, no reason why they couldn't have actually been on the main album, but then maybe, you know, cut for time or quality purposes. Very much in the style of, I know, B-sides from the old days. You know, you remember the old days of B-sides? They are very much B-side material. You could probably live without it. Um, though I enjoyed it as a supplemental fix of the album. Um, so, yeah, I mean, love the CD. The vinyl is corking over four sides. It's a great sounding piece of vinyl. Um... Like I said, I just I've absolutely loved it. Loved every minute of it. I think it's very strong. Enjoyed playing in the car, going for a ride in the sun, sunny sunny afternoon. Very very uplifting. Very very cool music. Not for everyone, um, but if you like Eno of a certain period, you're going to like this. If you like Carl Hyde, you you probably get a lot out of this. Too. I'm going to check out his solo album. He's had a solo album before this, which. Uh, Leo Abrams was involved in, so I'm going to go and give that a go, see what that's like, because um, it might it might be worth a an appraisal. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of a rating, in terms of a rating, I'm giving this five Daddy's Cars out of five. That's five Daddy's Cars out of five because I love it when a, a record comes out of the blue. You have no expectation of it, and it just you know, it just hits the right spots. It just hit all the spots that I like. Okay, it's you know it's a bit you know it's not it's not an original work, you know, not from Eno. I mean the problem again, the problem with Eno now is he's worked with so many people. There's so many stylistic ticks that he has that he's gonna he's gonna repeat himself. But it's like someone doing old standards. He's like ah oh, you know he's doing that and. I just really, really like it. Um, again, there's very few albums that come along that you can play from start to finish and say, I really enjoyed that. And this is one of them. It really, really, it, again, came out of the blue and astounded me. I didn't have great hopes for it, but I thought it was well worth it. Though I can, I can understand why some people might say, oh, it's a bit, um, you know, you know Similar to other things, I can, I can totally understand why someone might get it, but me as a Eno head, I'm there. So anyway, my name's been Darren Lock. I've been wittering on about. I'm going to do it the other side because I think I think I hurt myself. I've been wittering on about Someday World by Eno and Hyde. There you go. Uh, if you want to see the unboxing, peel back one. I unbox this and the vinyl. He says reaching down for the vinyl, so you can have a little look. Look at that. Spot varnish and everything. Top quality production. Absolutely lovely. Lovely, lovely bit of vinyl too. And uh, you get a download card too, he says, with that, so you can MP3 it. Yeah, I mean, if you notice the join there, that's because Muggins here didn't check to see if the, if the memory card was full. Oh, I'm so out of practice. Um, but yeah, give give this album a, a, a going over. Have a, have a check it out. You know, there might be something you, you enjoy. Um, I think it's a very it's a it's a summary it's a lovely summary album. It's good for blue skies and sunshine, and it's uplifting in places and this that and the other. Um, but anyway, I've said enough. I've witted on. I've witted on. I've witted on. You don't want to hear. You want to hear about bloody progressive rock and stupid stuff like that, and you know men wearing capes playing old music again. That's what you. That's what you want to hear about. Not not new stuff from people you've never heard of um, so that's it only one more thing to say apart from check this record out and that is progon